Today we welcome François Matelet, CEO of Wasmia. Good morning, Jonathan. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. First of all, what highlights are you most pleased with during the past quarter? Yeah, and, and that's a good question. So you know that uh, OASMIA continues to uh, successfully its uh, turnaround and uh, that is coming now to a uh, last phase. And um, and of course, you know, I'm very pleased with the significant progress uh, with the Eleva partner. But above all, I would say that I'm very proud with the being able to strengthen the team. We've been able to uh, appoint three um, executives at the senior level um, on my management team, CFO, interim CFO, CBO, and also four headcounts in uh, technical operations, you know, which is uh, very important, you know, for our technology platforms. One new note from the report is the XR18. Can you elaborate a bit on that and comment something more about mm. your new senior scientists? What are their backgrounds and why do you think that they want to join OASMIA? Yes, uh, this is the first time that I uh, relate to XR18. So uh, above all, you know, the vision is to replace XR17 by uh, XR18, but it will take a few years to do so. So. Uh, uh, please uh, don't uh, uh, don't hang me on this. Um, XR18 would be a uh, would enjoy some technical improvements of XR17, and then the overarching goal is also to secure long-term IP protection. And uh, you know that for every technology, you need to improve uh, stability, um, light sensitivity, for instance, the uh, uh, the storage, uh, uh, temperature, and so on and so forth. So, so this is really the, the vision for XR18. Now, to talk about uh, the people we've been uh, able to hire, so we're very pleased to hire very high-level people. Um, out of the four, three of them do have a PhD, and the other one has a Master of Science. But but you see, that does demonstrate that uh, we are a very attractive company. And uh, one of the reasons why they mentioned to me uh, when we hire them is because they can enjoy a broad range of responsibilities at OASMIA because we are a small company and therefore we can offer this possibility as opposed to work in a, in a multinational. And of course, because of the technology, that's the uh, the other reason why they want to join us. They they found the technology quite exciting. You see, in my opinion, it looks like you have in intensified your work on acquisitions. Can you say something about which phase you want to acquire or in license a candidate? Phase one, phase two, or or three? How how do you see that? Coming. Yes. So, so first of all, we have done a number of due diligence uh, with a number of companies and uh, and products. So that's the first thing. Uh, now we are not a uh, a research based company. So I the my main preoccupation is to de risk our portfolio. Therefore, I'm always looking at uh, uh, compounds uh, with a phase one B and with a positive results. Huh? That means uh, a positive proof of concept huh? on the clinical side. That's very important because it allows us to de-risk the portfolio and move into phase two. And uh, of course, you know, if I can find also uh, phase two compounds, uh, um, that will be, uh, of course, very interesting as well. But those are more costly, uh, but, but they are certainly in our scope as well. And I have to say that we are extremely methodical in this process. You know, we are not looking around like that. No, no, we are working, we are assisted with a firm that in looking at this, um, by the way, all over the world, and not only in the Nordics or in Europe, and that we are doing that in a very systematic way because this is the way to do it in order to de-risk your portfolio. Interesting. And a follow-up question about that. How do you prefer these activities to be financed? A share deal with your cash position or with the possibility to get some, some new investors in to the company? 
Well, I mean, the uh, the key for Oasmia, where we are now in our life cycle, is really to attract and retain institutional investors. That's absolutely one of my first priorities. Uh, with regard to the deal structure, well, I cannot comment a lot on this. Um, it, it will vary depending on the nature of the project and the scope of it. And of course, you know, um, upfront uh, payment uh, usually are paid in cash, so we are perfectly aware of this. But I cannot give you any precise uh, answer on this one, depending on the, uh, the scope and the size of the project. Yes, of course. Last time we t- we talked, you mentioned that you wanted to come out and meet potential new investors. Have you been able to implement this? And how do you feel that the interest is for OASMIA as a company? Does it feel like the new OASMIA are getting some more attention within the industry? Yes, for sure. Since uh, I joined the company, absolutely. Uh, I would uh, call that uh, OASMIA 2.0, by the way. So you know that OASMIA never did this before. Um, I have completed now the first round of uh, meetings with major institutions, so this is done, and um, I will obviously continue um, next year onwards. Uh, you know, I, I have to say that we have a very open and transparent communication with our investors. I know some of them are not always happy, but I can tell you that I disclose a lot and I will continue to do so. Um, provided that I stick to the NASDAQ rules and regulations, of course. Huh? Yes, but yes. Um, 2021 will be the year of uh, attracting and retaining investors, absolutely. Yeah. R- regarding your animal health part, can you say something about your own mm-hmm. view of the value of this part of the company? Ooh, uh, we have just mandated a, a well-known investment firm in that sector to evaluate partnering opportunities. So you have to be a little bit patient. Um, you know that uh, deal making in in our industry takes about you know six, nine months, uh, potentially 12 to complete. So I um, cannot say more beyond that, but uh, it is also a priority. Yep. The latest news from Elevar with some new studies with Apelia in ovarian cancer. For me, it seems like they are putting in a lot of time and and money in the product and truly believe it can be a pretty big drug. Can you elaborate a bit on your thoughts about their pathway regarding Apelia? Yeah, Jonathan, you're right. I mean, they will be putting a lot of time and money in uh, securing the registration for ovarian in in the U.S. And this is and this is a very strong sign of commitment of this company uh, to us in our partnership agreement. This is good. Now let me tell you a few things about that. Uh, you know, because I know that uh, that news have uh, negatively impacted our share price because clearly, you know, investors were expecting Eleva to file uh, with the FDA this year. Well. I believe it's really a better approach to secure this filing that certainly would increase uh, our chances of success. You know, the superiority study will achieve that goal. We will then be able to strengthen the label in the US and in Europe. So therefore, this will have a positive impact from a pricing standpoint in the US and therefore on the sales potential in the US. And that's absolutely key. And I would compare this with a kind of a jump. You know, I am a horse rider. So, you know, it's always better to secure your jump with a horse that can do it for sure instead of riding a horse that have never done it, you see. And with the FDA, that's the same. When you file, you want to be almost sure that you can succeed. At least this is my uh, way of doing things, my principle. I have seen so many companies trying to fight the FDA. That doesn't make any sense in my opinion. You need to listen what the FDA uh, has to say and then e- execute accordingly. And of course, it's a negotiation process, but above all, you know, <laughs> listen and, and execute. Yes. So so this is where, where we stand. Truly interesting. And um, last questions. It seems like there is a lot of bub- bub- bubbling behind closed doors within the company. Where do you see Wasmia in, say, one, two years from now? 
Yes, there is all sort of bubbling in uh, in some of the forum, which is not that uh, <laughs> which is not that correct uh, most of the time. To be frank, uh, a lot of wrong yeah, statements yeah. Uh, appear there. But anyway, um, well, in, in two years uh, from now, really, we should be on track to become a specialty pharma company, cash positive, with a good portfolio consisting of multiple products in oncology or in um, in specialty pharma in various phases of development. And at the same time, we will have improved our technologies. You know, for instance, in, uh, in tech ops, let me mention a few things. So we are looking at setting up a second manufacturing site, for instance. So this is part of our uh, planning process. We are certainly committed to invest in R&D. Uh, XR18, you know, uh, potentially will replace XR17 in a few years. So, so we have also um, uh, this goal in mind, you know. It, but above all, it is a step-by-step -step approach, Jonathan. I mean, every, every move will uh, move us closer to that goal. And we will be cautious in terms of acquisitions, um, even my experience of uh, uh, in oncology for decades and decades, uh, and um, because of course we all know that there is some risk in terms of clinical development. Um, however, I have uh, uh, the kind of a luxury to have on board a fantastic medical and uh, scientific team, and in tech ops as well. So all set for 21. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you for your time, Francois. You're welcome. Thank Great. you for for this interview as well. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye now.